Welcome to the Horizontal Bandsaw training video. In this video, we're going to cover everything about safety and operation of this small but vital piece of equipment located inside of the industrial makerspace. Starting off, a bandsaw is simply a saw that has a continuous running blade meant to run semi-automatically uh, compared to typical sawing techniques which requires reciprocating uh, the saw manually which you obviously have to do uh, by hand. Uh, our saw here is not the largest but it can cut most materials. It'll take on anything from steels and aluminums and stainless steels all the way down to plastics uh, and even wood if necessary. Uh, however, it's not good for anything that's uh, not rigid like uh, rope or fabrics. Starting off, the horizontal bandsaw has about five different parts you need to pay attention to. The motor and belt assembly down at the end, the hydraulic feed, which controls how fast it feeds into the material, the clamp itself, which is also controlled by the handle, the on switch, and the coolant on switch, as well as the blade itself. When wanting to operate a horizontal bandsaw, there are about four different parts you need to pay attention to. Your speed, your feed, to the clamp of the material, and the coolant. We're going to talk about each one of these sections step by step and then we'll uh, do a final example at the very end. Starting off, speed. This is how fast the blade is actually going through the material, not in a lateral motion but along the blade itself. This is controlled by the pulley system in the back uh, located to the motor itself. You can change the speed if you need to, typically harder metals like slower speed and uh, plastics and aluminum like higher speeds but for the most part, you probably don't need to change this. If you do need to change it, all you have to do is lo loosen the motor, pull the, the pulley back, change the speed, tighten the motor back up, and retighten all the bolts. I, I highly recommend talking to an MST about doing this operation if necessary. But like I said, more than likely you won't need to actually change the speeds. Now let's talk about feed. Feed is controlled by this hydraulic feed control here. There are two parts on, on this mechanism. First is the lever itself, which is this little block. This is what allows and enables and disenables the feed itself. So you can actually run the blade without it actually feeding down into the material. You just use the enable here. Now the knob at the top, this has a bunch of numbers, but really all you need to know is this is what controls how fast it falls down. If you open that knob counterclockwise, it'll actually feed a lot faster, but if you go clockwise, it'll feed a lot slower. Now one thing to note is you never want to close that knob all the way down. Doing that actually causes it to, over time, damage that, that uh, mechanism and we have to replace it. So if you can just stop the entire feed by using the lever, it would be a lot easier for both of us. The next one is the clamp. The clamp is controlled by this silver clamp right, uh, arm right here. This, all you have to do is stick your material on the inside, clamp down, don't too, too tight but definitely solid, and make sure your material is secure. I always do a good test by kind of pull and jiggling the material. If there's any movement at all, then you definitely have something wrong. If, you, if the clamps aren't close enough, talk to an MST and they can actually make adjustments for you. And lastly is coolant. There is a tank located on the back side of this machine. It's a blue tank. This is what stores all the coolant. This is typically just water with a little bit of additive in it, but we run pretty much straight water. Now, the point of coolant is to not only keep your blade cool, but also remove chips and pull the chips away from the cutting action itself. When you have a nice, clean, cold cut, you actually get a straighter cut and a much better surface quality on the ends, which means you can cut a little bit closer to tolerance. The other nice thing is that we're able to turn it on and off. Some materials actually don't want that uh, coolant. So things like aluminum typically really need uh, coolant, but sometimes steels don't. So you really just need to pay attention. Uh, you can also tell that there's a little red knob at the top. This is what turns uh, the amount of coolant. The pump itself is controlled by the main on switch. So when you're ready, just you can turn the coolant pump on and it won't turn on until you turn the main switch on. The last thing I want to talk about is once you have all four steps kind of to the point that you're happy about, let's talk about safety. You don't, there are some materials you don't want to cut. Fabrics and ropes, those you absolutely do not want to cut. The other aspect of it is once this blade starts moving, you don't want your hands anywhere near it. Even at the very end of cutting off a part, if it's about to fall off, don't even bother trying to grab, just let it, let it fall off completely and hit the ground. That is completely fine. While this machine seems entirely automatic, it's not. You need to pay attention and stay with the machine the entire cutting process, especially if you're doing repeat cuts. 
It's very easy and very common that a blade can get stuck in the material and it'll start burning out belts. And if you do that, you can quickly lose access to this piece of equipment. As always, the last thing we ask is that you clean the, the horizontal bandsaw when you're done. This means taking a vacuum, vacuuming everything up, drying up anything that needs to be done, taking your scrap material back to the recycling bin, and returning the keys as necessary. I hope you found this video informative, and as always, if you have any questions, just talk to an MST.